Rogers stops by and tells us who he thinks is the number two team in the country. His answer may have you surprised. And last, but certainly not least, College Game Day's Kirk Herbstreit checks in with a glimpse into Saquon Barkley's dominance. It's time for Heisman Talk. Let's go. And we are back. Laura Rutledge and me, Mr. Rat Poison. We are going to talk to Jalen Hurston, and I cannot wait to get a conversation with him and maybe ask him why he's not in the Heisman race, considering how he has played this year. Hello, Heisman voters. Uh, you know, I, I want to say, too, I wonder if Jalen can hear us right now, if he heard us just <laughs> screaming in excitement <laughs> if, if, if to start the show. <laughs> if he heard that introduction, he would have already... He's like, off for the he's like, these sale. two clowns, I don't want to talk to yeah, them. We're sorry we screamed, but they, 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 they want us to be excited. Well, it's we really are excited. I mean, at, at this point in the season, I was thinking about this today, this is just so perfect for, for what we want to talk about at this time of year. We saw a bunch of teams upset last week, and now it, it seems as though you want, you want to know what's going to happen for the rest of the season. Are we going to keep seeing this wackiness, or is it going to sort of settle out and we look back on week seven as, hey, it was Friday the 13th, it was all this weirdness, maybe it's not going to continue on. I think another thing that, that's about to start happening, if you're in the middle to lower division, you're not going to be talked about anymore because as we get toward Halloween, which is an interesting date, Spooky. the college football play uh, you don't have to dress up. The college football <laughs> playoff committee will start dictating and dominating all conversation. Here's a little teaser for Halloween. I'm dressing up as Paul, so uh, tune in for that mm. in a couple of weeks. For now, though, Friday we mentioned night. Jalen Hurts. He's coming up, but he has been so dominant for this Alabama team so far this year. Jalen Hurts always makes a difference. So difficult to defend. You can't stop this kid. Oh, so easy. It's awfully hard to tell a guy that talented to stay in the pocket. And all of a sudden he says, you know what? I got a lane. Am I supposed to stay here or just walk this thing into the end zone? Rush that dirt off. And in the red zone, when you have a quarterback who can run like that, it just gives you a whole different type of offense. So it's pretty easy to go next level on Jalen Hurts. And a lot of people talk about the passing numbers. You see what he's done outside the pocket. The, the run game is so incredible with Jalen Hurts because he's somebody that is so difficult to tackle. He provides a true dual threat. And it's just been lightning fast and just incredible for this Alabama team this season, Paul. And we are so delighted to welcome in Jalen Hurts, the program. Jalen, thanks so much for being with us. and. Uh, Kind of a prosaic question to ask, considering where Alabama is, but uh, how has it gone so far, especially with your own play? Um, I think things are going good for this team. Um, you know, we, we've played some really good teams this far and um, kind of came into a hump um, in playing AM, a a really good team. But um, we got, a, got the opportunity to bounce back against Arkansas and kind of, you know, we solidify our identity. Jalen, one of my favorite things about you is when we were there for the Alabama spring game, you came in and talked with us, and on your phone you had a, a screensaver as your background that was Clemson hoisting the national championship trophy. You said that served as great motivation for you. How are you motivated this season just thinking about unfinished business from last year? Well, the screensaver hasn't changed. Um, you know, it's going to be that way, and it's going to stay that way until we you know, hopefully get the opportunity to you know, change and you know, change will happen, but um, we'll never forget what happened. You know, we're, we're going to always hold that as a motivating factor to to win games this season. So you know, every day we go out there and practice, we have a goal, and that goal is to get better and improve. Jay, and I, I don't want to be ejected out of this chair by asking you about Clemson <laughs> moving forward. I'm, I'm sure your coach won't like this, but I mean, is that is that a game you would like to see again? Um, no. Uh, I'm going to say the right thing right now. That, uh, <laughs> Come on, Jay. Let me answer the question. <laughs> that we need to, you know, focus on the, the game, the next game that's ahead of us. You know, we played Tennessee this week, a rivalry game, and you know it'll be an interesting one. But we'll we'll focus on them right now. Good question. Uh, Nick Saban just said you can remain on the team. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jay, I, I want to talk about this game because everyone knows Tennessee is having just a horrendous season. Uh, the experts expect Alabama to win in a dominant fashion, but that's not how you are programmed and not how you are coached to think. So explain to the, to the country how you approach this game and every game. I'm pretty sure it's the same. Um, and, you know, we, we know that we have a target on our back, you know, going into every game we play, and we have to be ready to play. We have to be ready to play our best game at all times. 
So, you know, coming into this week, we're playing against a really, I mean, a, a really good Tennessee team, if you think about it. They have a lot of great players. Defense is fast, and they rally to the ball. And, you know, we, we're going to have to come out there and play. We're going to have to come out there and play hard. Jalen, this Alabama rush game has just been incredible throughout this season. What can you say about those guys around you at the running back spot? While you continue to have running numbers that are at the tops of the tops for this team, but they also complement you so well. Well, we have a lot of great players on this team, a lot of guys that make plays when they have the ball in their hand, um, a lot of you know, good blocking, especially last week from the receiver court that, that kind of went unnoticed. But um, it's, a, it's a whole team contribution and you know, everybody kind of does their part but I mean it's, it's I mean it you know we try and do the best best job we can do of you know getting our playmakers the ball and and, our, and allowing them to make plays. Jalen if I could talk about you for a second indulge me please uh, you were the SEC offensive player of the year but there were some critics out there that, that found fault in your game and, and you have a new coordinator now in Brian Dable so talk a little bit about how he has helped you maybe become a little more accurate passer. Um, well, I, I always thought I could throw the football. Um, you know, there were times where, you know, I was inconsistent and, you know, probably didn't execute the best way I could have. But um, I think coaches came in, and, you know, we've, we've learned the offense and we've got it kind of down packed. And, you know, we, we know what we want to do as an offensive team. And I think that's, I think that's shown you know, as an offensive unit. Jalen, Nick Saban often will have rants with the media, of course, the latest one being the rat poison rant. What do you and your teammates do when you see these rants and maybe when you see the social media reaction as well? I mean, he's not, he, he, he's telling the truth. <laughs> I agree with him 100%. You know, the, the media is going to say one thing, and at the end of the day, as a team, we have to focus on what's going on inside, going on inside the building, what's going on inside, inside of these walls that we you know, work very hard in every day. Okay, Jalen, uh, that was kind of a non-answer there, but I, I'm going to ask you again, because I said today on a program that I thought Alabama was so far and away the best team in the country, and, and others have said the same thing. And is that what he's talking about, that he doesn't want you to hear that type of noise? Because you clearly do. You've been the number one team in the country for the last two years. I mean, we, we hear what's going on. Now, I was asked that same question after the Arkansas game, um, I mean, we, we know what's going on. We see those those top-tier teams, you know, lose their first game or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, we don't want to be that team. You know, we, we just want to try and stay as focused as we can and, and stay the task and, and get the job done and continue to win. That's what we want to do. Jalen, you were just passing the rat poison test with flying colors. I mean, just excuse Paul over <laughs> I don't there. think he, he is. He, no, he is. He, you're, you're trying to trip him up, and he's just nailing it. Uh, but I do want to know, I have major hair envy right now. Your hair is incredible. What, what is the process that goes into getting it to look like that? Because I'm really I'm glad you asked that it. question. It looks amazing. I, I love it. <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. Um, I, I can actually tell you that I woke up like this, so <laughs> I just... I, wo I woke up like this. Yeah, you, you need that shirt. Yeah, Jalen, if you woke up like this, the first person that saw you, I, I think might have been a little bit scared, don't oh, you think? Oh, stop. Paul, do you even know what I woke up like this comes from? That's, Paul, that's a look, Beyonce look, thing. Paul, Paul might want some of my hair. Yeah. Oh. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> I was about to get educated on Beyonce and Jay-Z, and, and, and you, you, you had to come in with the, uh, the slam dunk there. That was, I mean, you just dropped the mic, Jalen. You just nailed it. That was amazing. Jalen, all kidding aside, I am pretty envious. I much, <laughs> and, I like, and, and your hair versus Laura's hair, because I think that's really your natural color. Wow, Paul. All right. Well, anyway, uh, that, that is true. Um, Jalen, thank you so much for your time. We're no going problem. to send a report card to Nick Saban with an A-plus on passing A -plus. the rat poison test. Thank you, Jalen. Thank you. Wow. It, I mean, it, also it was, throwing some smack down there. That it was, was great. It was a great interview. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever speak again. Yeah, well, that, that's thanks to you, okay? I, I think everything's fine on my end, but you need to... You know, wrap it up over there, my he, friend. He did a great job, though, Laura, of of just swatting the questions away. He, he never so answered. Good. He doesn't. Uh, and yeah, you know, even the, even the vulnerability question about him. What type of a long field uh, down the field passer is he? he he just said, I'm trying to get better. Well, there will be teams at some point, I think, that force Alabama to throw the ball downfield a little bit more. But the fact of the matter is, it is going to be so difficult to stop that run game. Yeah. E even if you load the box, even if you force them into a situation where they have to pass it, 
he has some targets that he likes. Yeah. And and if you look around, I mean, Ruggs is, has only caught touchdown passes, right? Yeah. Like, they have so many weapons. Jerry Judy, they have Calvin Ridley. He has options and comfortability with those options. Paul, why is there no Heisman love for Jalen Hurts? I think that is about to change. If you go through the evolution of the Heisman Trophy this year, Laura, it started with Sam Darnold. It pretty much ended there. And then Lamar Jackson made a claim. Mm. And then Baker Mayfield, week two. And I think some of these, I think Sam Darnold has fallen out of the wayside. By the wayside, yeah. uh, Lamar Jackson cannot find his way back. So, so now you have three or four people. And I think Jalen is slowly moving up. And I think he needs a big stage. Unfortunately for him, Alabama is, is playing in prime time, but they're not big stages because the games mm. are so one-sided. So where, is, where will his signature moment be? It could be against Auburn yeah. or against Georgia in the SEC championship game. Remember, two or three years ago, Derrick Henry came out of nowhere mm. and started loading up numbers down the stretch. You're a Heisman voter. Is it enough as a Heisman contender to have one signature moment? It helps. Uh, but, but I will tell you, as a Heisman voter, it, it is deceiving all of this Heisman conversation. I've been asked mm. the Heisman question yeah. in the preseason and every week. Now we're in week eight. Yeah. I do not decide until the last moment. I, I, on that final Monday, I, I'm a procrastinator. Yeah. I'm sure you probably didn't know you, that. Yeah, you, you really are. I don't know how you passed any classes in school, honestly. I don't yeah. go back and look at my, my, my transcript. <laughs> We're going to look you up. The point is that I sit there and I fill out the ballot. You vote for mm -hmm. three. And that's where Jalen Hurts is going to shine because he will have played in consecutive weeks of significant games. And I think if he continues those numbers and Alabama is undefeated, he will at least make it to New York. What about somebody like Bryce Love out in the West Coast where a lot of people say maybe we haven't seen the games, maybe we are only seeing highlight reels of him, maybe we haven't seen some of his signature moments already. If you're in that situation of being a voter, what do you do to take that into account, especially since you really do wait until the end of the season? I don't think he could win uh, because I don't know if Stanford is going to be important enough or, or compelling enough. And, and, and I, I think what you just said is interesting. None of us, uh, if, if I'm... If I'm covering Alabama, for instance, and I'm a Heisman voter, I'm not seeing him play. I'm, right. I'm, I'm getting home late Saturday night. Writing your story. you know, uh, yeah. Watching SportsCenter right. or getting up Sunday morning and seeing the five highlights of the, of, the, of the previous day. That's how most Heisman voters consume college football. That may sound uh, unfortunate. You may go, well, what a, what a stupid system. It, it really is a fairly stupid system. There are people voting for the Heisman Trophy law. I'm not sure are alive. But the, 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 you Can we get, check on that? Anyone, you, can anyone, you, you get a vote. I mean, like, I don't have a Heisman vote. Yeah. And I'm not saying I should. I would like to, but I'm alive, so at least be better than somebody who isn't. I'll share my vote with you. Um, well, your the, vote's going to be heavily influenced by me. Well, it could be, but the point is that we, we make too much out of the process. Well, who's, who's ahead in October? Because it, it will all go down the drain, and that's why I think it favors someone like Jalen Hurts who in my mind would be playing on a team that's undefeated and ranked number one in the country. Well, we haven't even talked about Saquon Barkley yet in this Heisman conversation. It seems like right now he's ahead of everybody else, at least slightly, although I would say that Baker Mayfield in the win over Texas gave himself a little well, bit of a launching point. With Saquon Barkley, do you look at that as more of, okay, how does Penn State factor in and how important are they because they're going in a tough stretch here in the Big Ten over the next couple of weeks, or is it more about what he's done? I think there are a couple of criteria. I, I do think it helps immensely to play on a contender. And in Barkley's case, he's playing in the biggest game of the country Saturday. He'll have another game later in the season at Ohio State. will be the biggest game probably that day. So he, he has a lot of energy. Uh, Mayfield is in good shape, yeah. uh, even with the loss. So th I, that's why I don't like Bryce. I just don't think he's going to be on a stage big enough uh, unless Notre Dame keeps winning and Stanford collides with Notre Dame later in the season. No likey for Bryce Love. Not a lot. I th that sounded better in my head than it sounded in real life. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll actually talk to Kirk Herbstreit later on about Saquon Barkley as well. But when we come back, the importance of OU's win over Texas. How did that factor in and really where are the Longhorns going? The Paul Feinbaum Show is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Whatever it takes. 
Richardson on the carry, cuts back, reaching for the end zone, and it's 20 to nothing. Finally getting rid of it, and Porter into the end zone. And look at Oklahoma's remaining schedule at K-State. Only Oklahoma State looks like a serious threat, although mm, uh, TCU. the FBI may be looking past TCU. But that they're in good shape, though, Laura, when it comes to what's ahead. They have two tests left. I really think TCU is a bigger test than a lot of people are giving credit for. Uh, Gary Patterson is such a good coach that will have this team disciplined and ready to go, especially defensively. May, may truly be an example of a team that could give Baker Mayfield some troubles. I mean, it, he, he's obviously difficult to contain, but Gary Patterson, I think, Paul, should be up there when we talk about the coaches who truly are the best at game planning ahead of time. He's good at in-game adjustments, too, but I think he comes in with one of the better game plans. It's so remarkable. He has been there since 2001. Yeah. And, and Laura, oh, you'll hear his name again, but, but this is someone who has had opportunity after opportunity to leave. Mm -hmm. He stayed in Fort Worth. Yeah. Uh, Paul, this was a win for Oklahoma over Texas where a lot of people still think of Texas, and I don't think this is fair, a lot of people still think of Texas as that team that lost to Maryland to start the season. Can't Texas has gotten better as they've gone along. And by the way, they had a dominant win over Iowa State on a Thursday. Iowa State, of course, the team that upset Oklahoma. So what do you think this says for Oklahoma to be able to beat Texas? Well, I, I think it was an important hurdle, especially coming off of that loss. And this is one of the biggest rivalry games in the country. So it doesn't matter what the final score was. They got past that and now have a, have a path. Uh, Oklahoma, much like Ohio State last year, if they go through the remainder of the, the season, including the Big 12 championship, undefeated, what do they have? They have a win over Ohio State. That could get them in the playoff. Right, because who knows where Ohio State factors in, but you're pretty high big. on them. I yes. agree, especially now that Penn State's about to go on a tough stretch here. Okay, one of the highlights, though, on the Texas side of things in this game is Sam Ellinger and his play. Now, when I saw them on a Thursday night against Iowa State, Shane Bouchel was the starter, and they said they were only going to Ellinger if they absolutely needed to. He has shown, Paul, an ability to be a dual-threat quarterback that may be the future at the Texas program. Tom Herman functions very well with a quarterback who provides the ability to run as well. And as you can see as a freshman, he's doing it all. Ranks actually for Big 12 in the Big 12 first in passing yards as a freshman so far this season. And here's Tom Herman talking about the youngster. He's like a a wild horse right now that you you're trying to tame him a little bit but you don't want to take away his energy and, and one of the things that that really makes him so effective and so uh, we had a conversation him and myself yesterday that you know right now it's a, it's about pocket presence and let's hang in there a little bit longer and not at first sight of opposite colored jersey tuck the ball and think we're larry zonka you know and then it turns into coach who's larry zonka and then okay <laughs> Larry oh, Zonka, then you're probably like going, what? I, I actually, who is that? <laughs> he played about 40 years ago. Okay. Um, I'm much older than Sam Ellinger, by the way. Uh, but, Paul, I do think that, you know, there have been the comparisons made of Tebow and Sam Ellinger. And I'm not saying Sam Ellinger is Tim Tebow, but there are some similarities in the way that he plays. And it was interesting when I was at, at that Iowa State-Texas game on a Thursday. For, te for Thursday games, a lot of times NFL scouts can come out because they have freedom on a Thursday. So many of them that were standing on the sideline with me in pregame warm-ups were talking about just how solid he is in his lower body and how much they like that. Well, in, in that regard, he does look like Tebow. <laughs> well, but, but I, I, I think the comparisons are getting a little bit ahead. I mean, yeah. Tim Tebow won the Heisman, was a finalist, and in my mind, maybe the greatest college football player of the last 50 years. So mm. let's not get carried away here. Okay, but for Texas and where they fit into all this, I think a lot of people were overzealous in thinking that this was going to be this quick of a turnaround for the Texas Longhorns. People got a little excited with well, Tom Herman. Texas, okay? Texas, no one hope is listening in Austin, but Texas always thinks it is going to be a contender. And they have been through a, a long 
nomadic walk in the desert with the Charlie Strong situation and now Tom Herman. I think they will get there, but mm -hmm. they were not going to get there this year. And I think that the, the preseason polls are, put them way too high, and then the Maryland loss uh, brought them right back down to earth. I like that long nomadic walk in the desert. That painted a very clear picture for me. Former writer. That's why I... You're so poetic. I'm so great with words. You really are. Uh, okay, so this has nothing to do with poetry, but no. Ole Miss and what? Houston Nutt have settled their lawsuit. a Faulkner novel. That was very good Oxford tie there. Paul, what were your reactions to seeing that this is at least done for now? Too little, too late, Laura. In this case, been settled early on. Hugh Freeze would still be the head football coach at Ole Miss. Hmm. Instead, uh, there was an arrogance level in Oxford about this case. Uh, instead of dealing with you uh, with Houston, uh, and it's pretty obvious that the school tried to trash him. It, it, it really came back to haunt him. If you look at Houston now, uh, he issued a pro forma statement. Yeah, I'm pleased it's behind me. I've pretty right, much that, taken the school apart. I've gotten my revenge. That cold statement serve. says a lot right there. Just kidding. It really doesn't say a whole lot. Um, it was such an unnecessary period for Ole Miss. Yeah, and, and you think if they had just nipped it in the bud the second that Houston Nutt came well, to them? Well, the genesis of this case is that when when the NCAA allegations started surfacing, it all started with the report by, by Pat Forty and Yahoo, mm -hmm. and the the powers that be at Ole Miss tried to push it all off on Houston Nutt, and he said, no, that's not it, and it turned out not to be the case, and they have, and that's when his lawyer started subpoenaing right. records, and that's how Freeze was felled. Yeah, I know we don't want to play in what ifs here, but what does Ole, Mi Ole Miss's season look like if Hugh Freeze is still the head coach? There, there would be a, at least a, a win, maybe one more win right now. It wouldn't yeah. be dramatic because some of their losses I, I don't think could have been avoided, like Alabama and Auburn, but they wouldn't have gone through the total embarrassment. Now, again, at some point, maybe what Hugh Freeze is alleged to have done would have come out, but it, mm -hmm. it would not have been as embarrassing. Remember one thing about Ole Miss, though. They're still waiting for a verdict yeah. from the NCAA. So they, they are not done yet. Okay, and by the way, their case to the NCAA is completely contingent upon supporting Hugh Freeze. Yes, well, so, uh, <laughs> a couple weeks after they fired Hugh Freeze for whatever, they, they never quite were explicit, mm -hmm. although most people can, could have figured it out, they had to go to Indianapolis and stand, I think it was actually Kentucky, uh, and stand side by side with Hugh Freeze so in other words, you know, let's say, don't don't flinch here. You know, I'm we scared. we are we we have we're we're together in a partnership. Yeah. And then we break up, and then we have, we still have to appear and act like we like each other. Yeah, and which we, is hard for we, us to do anyway. Right, we don't even like each other anyway. The, the, yeah, the whole thing. I mean, you cannot make this stuff up. It, it just continues to become more and more interesting. Obviously, we'll be keeping you posted. We're about to, though, class up this show significantly. Jordan Rogers joins us when we come back. He'll be smiling. Maybe we'll get a wave from him, too. <laughs>